Hey everybody and welcome back to Photon Photography. I'm Jesse Lavelle and today I'm going to make a video about some of the reasons why I really love the Canon R6. This is where I commonly shoot a lot of my wildlife photography. And right now I have the Canon R6 matched up with the Tamron 100 to 400 millimeter lens. This is what I shoot wildlife with. And I love the Canon R6 for wildlife. Now there's a couple things going for it mixed together that I think really make it the best wildlife photography camera that you can get right now. And that's one being the fact that it has the new dual pixel two autofocus with the animal eye tracking. That is one really big advantage is having the ability to do animal eye tracking. And that mixed with the dual pixel 2 autofocus that's really really sticky and really really aggressive compared to the dual pixel 1 autofocus like in the RP makes it really really work well when you're trying to shoot anything fast moving like birds in flight or anything like that. Another reason that it's really advantageous to use with wildlife photography is the high ISO performance that the Canon R6 20 megapixel sensor provides. This thing can shoot at ISO 12,800 and still have usable files which is really crazy to me because I was never able to come to anything even close to that with any of my other cameras. The third factor that makes this thing absolutely amazing at wildlife photography, one is that you can shoot at either 12 frames per second or 20 frames per second, depending on whether you use electronic or mechanical shutter mode. Electronic shutter mode is entirely silent, which is really, really helpful for wildlife, even though there are some restrictions that come with shooting like that. Generally, the only thing that's really gonna hold you back is the fact that you're gonna have to deal with rolling shutter if you choose to shoot with an electronic shutter mode. For that reason, I usually shoot with the mechanical shutter mode and the 12 frames per second, and I find 12 frames per second to be more than enough than I ever need for wildlife photography. So all of these factors mixed together make the Canon R6 really, really good at wildlife photography. It's worked for me, and I know some people are concerned about the 20 megapixel sensor and not being able to crop in, but I haven't had any problems with that either. I was concerned about it when I purchased the camera, but after I used it for a while, that concern went away because I'm able to crop right in on my images and I'm still totally fine. That being mixed with some of the solutions that have come out like, say, Gigapixel AI, where you can now upconvert the resolution of still imagery, is definitely going to bridge the gap for any kind of issues that you might run into with a lower megapixel sensor. So again, all of these things are reasons why I think the Canon R6 is really one of the best in Canon's lineup right now. Now, I'm not saying it's better than the R5. The R5 has a 45 megapixel sensor, and that's obviously going to help you crop in more than the R6 is. But for the price, in this price range, I still think that it's the best wildlife camera that I could have purchased. And if I had to make a purchase today, it's still the camera I would buy. Another reason that I really like using the Canon R6 is that I really love using the RF STM Prime lenses. They're super light, they're nice and sharp, I find the autofocus to work really, really well. And as you guys know, I run a YouTube channel, so I do a lot of video work with the Canon R6. Now, some people will say that this is a stills camera only, and I beg to differ. I find it to be very, very good at hybrid work. You know, obviously there are some restrictions when it comes to video modes, like not being able to shoot in 4K at 120 frames per second, or having some of those overheating limits. Now, I'm not gonna complain about those things in this video. If you wanna see some of the things I don't like about the Canon R6, check out this video that I made above. This video about things that I love about the Canon R6 and like I said the IBIS being included into this camera is really really helpful when it comes to video work. Now I talked a little bit about the IBIS wobble that you get with ultra wide lenses but if you're not using ultra wide lenses I find that the IBIS inside of the Canon R6 is actually really really helpful. Maybe not for like walking or movement type of shots where you really do need a gimbal but when you're doing like small pan shots
it does take that little bit of shake out of it and allow you to get really, really smooth footage, especially when you're mixing it with any of the RF lenses. I've found even the cheaper RF STM primes to work really, really well. So I've been loving using the RF lenses and I love using the Canon R6 for video work. I get C-Log, C-Log 3, 10-bit, and even 4K video footage off from this camera that's absolutely beautiful. When you shoot in 60 frames per second in 4K, you're actually getting an oversampled 5.1K image that then gets downsampled into the 4K image that we see. So the Canon R6 by far surpasses any of the video footage that I was able to capture with any of my older cameras. Again, now the Dual Pixel 2 autofocus comes into play, and that makes a massive difference when I'm recording things. The Dual Pixel 2 autofocus just works so much better, especially when it comes to tracking people's faces and people's eyes. All of these things make the Canon R6 a really viable hybrid workhorse. This thing does everything that I've ever needed it for, even with the restrictions that come with, say, like the overheating and things like that. So for all of those reasons that I just listed, I really do think the Canon R6 is one of the best, if not the best in its price range, wildlife photography camera that you can buy today. Now, I do a lot of macro photography, and again, the IBIS really comes in handy when it comes to mixing it with the stabilization that's inside of my 100 millimeter f2.8 L lens. The IBIS allows me to get slower shutter speeds and keep my camera image steady so that I don't get any type of motion blur when I'm trying to take my shots. Now that again mixed with the really good high ISO performance from the Canon R6 helps you to shoot natural light environments when you're trying to do macro work. So again I do feel that the Canon R6 really excels because of its autofocus system, the internal stabilization that was included, and the fact that it shoots really really high burst rates. Having all of those things mixed together just makes this camera so much more usable than any of the other cameras that I used in the past. I used to shoot with the Canon RP, the Canon M50, and the Canon T6, and compared to any of those cameras, blows it out of the water. Another thing that makes me really like the R6 is the overall ergonomics, or just the way everything is set up, and also the fact that it's really customizable. Now I set up dual back button autofocus for this camera, and that I felt really unlocked the autofocus system, or my ability to control that autofocus system and have it become the most reliable that it could be. If you guys are interested in that setup, go ahead and check the video out above. That'll walk you through how to customize all of the buttons the same way that I did, and you'll have dual back button autofocus as well, and that basically just allows you to use either spot or eye tracking and switch seamlessly whenever you want. And that spot autofocus becomes kind of like a fail safe. Again, I felt that the autofocus system just became so reliable, and my keeper rate just went through the roof once I set it up this way. The overall customability of this camera is a super big advantage. I also love having the joystick on the back. I do like using the touch screen to move my autofocus sometimes, but the joystick is overall just a better system altogether. Thank you.